Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the making a phone call cheat sheet. Want to be able to talk on the phone in your target language? Then this conversation cheat sheet will help you do just that. You'll learn all the basic phrases, questions, and answers you'll need when making a call. Second, want to know the learning hacks, motivational tips, and success strategies for learning a language in 2020? Then you'll want this exclusive 52-page ebook. Download it now for free before we take it down. Third, words and phrases for the dentist. Learn how to schedule a checkup, talk about a toothache, and much more with this one-minute vocab lesson. Fourth, can you talk about your zodiac sign? Then this next one-minute lesson is for you if you want to learn. You'll learn how to say the 12 signs in your target language. Fifth, the 32 words you'll need for language learning. Noun, verb, adjective, sentence, grammar. Can you say these in your target language? If not, you'll want this quick one-minute lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks for our members only. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12 month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. I saluti. I saluti. The easiest one that you probably know already is ciao. Ciao, which just means hi, hello. You can say that to people that you meet for the first time or people that you meet on the street and you're just talking. But if it's someone like your teacher or your future boss, you may want to be a bit more formal and say buongiorno, buongiorno, good day if it's day, <laughs> if it's daytime. Usually, okay, in theory, it's supposed to be fine until 1 p.m., from which then you switch to buon pomeriggio, good afternoon, or buona sera, good evening. Business that are kind of conservative, like maybe old shops with people that sell traditional products, they would switch to buona sera, immediately after 1 p.m. even if it's still like bright outside and don't use the buon pomeriggio in between but yeah it's just a formal way to say hi sometimes instead of buongiorno you will hear buon di where di means giorno it's still formal though so don't worry you can use that i like it more it's more like hey buon di <laughs> i don't know i really like the accent at the end maybe that's why Sounds more cheerful to me. Bundi. Of course, you can go with the hey or hey la, which doesn't need to have a real Italian word in that, so it's easy. But I would say that if you say hey, you feel like you need to say the name at least of the person that you know, because that's informal, right? So just say hey, and it's not something that you can use with your teacher again. So maybe you need to go like hey, Julia, long time no see. But if you don't remember the name, something really, really useful and that you will hear sometimes is Hey, carissimo! Or Hey, carissima! Or cara! Caro! Which is just like dear! And carissimo is just like, oh, extra dear, like, you know. <laughs> of course, it's something that you use with someone that you know already. So if it's people that you have never seen before, just stick to buongiorno and you'll be fine. Don't forget, though, that on the phone, you don't start with ciao or buongiorno or your name, but you say pronto, pronto, which literally means ready. So you just pick up the phone with pronto, then I go with ciao, sono Daisy, oh carissima, come stai? And the reason why we say pronto is because we kept it from when we use like services to connect people. Like, you know, when technology wasn't where it is today, we had to go through switchboards and operators that would connect people from one side to the other, right? The guy in the middle would ask the one and the other if they were ready. So they said, ready, ready. And then they were connected. So the first thing that you heard was pronto. And that's why we still use pronto. 
I know that in English it's common to say things like how are you, fine, fine, like even to people that you don't know, like in the shop. In Italian we don't really do that, like not in shops, for example, with people that you have never seen before. But we do use that when we meet people that we know already or when we are introduced to someone new. And in that case you can say come va? How are things going? Come stai? How are you? Or tutto bene? Everything's fine? which, yeah, works kind of the same, but don't say that in shops. Continuing our journey through the day, after buonasera, which is good evening, there is buonanotte, so good night, but we don't say that when we meet, it's only when we say goodbye, okay? So buonanotte is just a like, good night, like you're sure that the other person is just going home and sleeping, okay? Because otherwise it's buona serata, so like have a nice night from here on, or buona giornata, have a good day, from here on. Of course, you don't have to go so specific, you can just say ciao ciao as a goodbye, or arrivederci, just goodbye, or see you soon, a presto, a presto. And yes, sometimes you will hear ciao even three times or more, especially on the phone, because we want to fill the time up until we actually put it down. So we're gonna be like ciao, 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 ciao. And yeah, there are people that go on forever. <laughs> so that's also something that you could hear. Also, don't forget that for us, it's common to kiss on the cheeks when we meet someone. Not for the first time. In that case, we would just go for a handshake. But actually, even when you say goodbye after you spend some time together, even if it was for the first time, it's fine to kiss on the cheek. And it's usually two kisses, not one, not three. Some people do just one or three, but that's not the standard. The standard is two. You go like this and that. You don't want to make too much of a sound though. And also sometimes it's just basically the cheek touching softly. It's not really a kiss. That's something I wouldn't do, especially with people that you don't really know. So yeah, keep that in mind. So we just go like, hey, ciao. And that's it. <laughs> Especially girls, we do that a lot, but men do that too. Like girl, girl, man, 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 girl, everyone. I think you now have a wide range of greetings, but I also want to teach you something else. When you hear something like say ciao, like that, it's not really a greeting, it's more like yeah, sure, whatever, kind of. So keep that in mind too, and the same goes with buonanotte. Since, as I told you, it's not something that you say when you say goodbye, it may be used to say, and that's it. For example, let's say I don't really know which bag to buy, and I have been discussing it with my friends for so long, I'm like, the red one or the black one, oh, I don't know. And at some point I just go like, okay, you know what, I'll buy the black one and good night. Okay, you know what, compro quella nera e buonanotte. Which means we will not talk about this again. That's it, that's the end. It can be really convenient and funny to use. Like, I decided to do that, e buonanotte. Ho fatto così, e buonanotte. So, to sum up, we have ciao, hey carissimo, or hey cara, carissima, buongiorno, buon pomeriggio, buonasera. If you don't want to decide which one to use between buongiorno, buon pomeriggio, or buonasera, you can also use salve which is another formal way to just say hello. Salve. Arrivederci, or a presto, or buonanotte, at the end. So yeah, let me wish you all a good day or a good night from now on. Buona giornata, or buona serata. Provarci. First of all, let's say that hit on someone in English. In Italian can be translated as provarci con qualcuno. So, to try with someone. Otherwise, a more neutral verb could be approcciare. So, just to get in touch with. Not physically. Let's imagine you're at a bar, you see someone you would like to talk to, and, okay, there is the easiest way that we all went through. Either you tried this or someone tried this on you, I'm sure. Do we know each other already? Ci conosciamo? Or ci siamo già visti? Have we seen each other already? Have we met before? Ci siamo già visti? 
or if you want to really commit this technique then you just go let's assume it's a girl just go up to her and be like hey julia it has been so long hey julia quanto tempo and then you go like oh sorry you're not julia what's your name oh scusa non sei julia come ti chiami it's always an option and if you get the i don't know you non ti conosco answer you can always be like yeah then let's okay allora conosciamoci which may be a bit creepy, but... Conosciamoci. If you don't want to go for the fake, I know you already, and just accept the fact that you don't know each other, you can ask if she's drinking something, maybe. You can pretend you want to get the same one. Otherwise, you can ask so that you can buy her the same one. Uh-huh. So, I know you didn't see that coming, huh? Cosa stai bevendo? What are you drinking? This is super personal, but it happened to me before and I don't dislike this approach. Like when you're on a line to wait to get your drink, what are you going to get? Cosa prendi? Or even better, cosa consigli? What do you suggest? Which may also lead you to the next phrase. Vieni qua spesso? Do you come here often? Or is it your first time here? È la prima volta che vieni? È la prima volta che vieni? Another way to break the ice, especially in Italy, I'm sure everywhere in the world, but especially in Italy, you just ask for a lighter if you're a smoker. If you don't, you can pretend, okay? I don't smoke, for example, but still, you can ask for... I wouldn't ask for a cigarette, though, because I see that with my friends and they don't really like it, because it sounds like you just want to get something for free. So just ask for a lighter. Hai un accendino? Do you have a lighter? Or, do you have to light up? It's also something that we say. Hai da accendere? But if they tell you no, you can just go with the truth and be like, well, it doesn't matter because I just wanted to talk to you. Non importa. Volevo solo parlarti. Which I find really cute, by the way. Volevo solo parlarti. I think I'm saying this step by step in my mind. I hope you can follow me too. Now that we broke the ice and we are talking already, it's better to compliment something in particular. Hai dei bellissimi occhi. You have beautiful eyes. Or hai un sorriso stupendo. Your smile is beautiful. Splendid. Splendido. Hai un sorriso splendido. Let's say you know this girl already, like for real. Not <laughs> just pretending. Um, you may want to be more specific in your compliment because maybe you said something nice to her already. So something like Questo vestito, this dress, ti sta molto bene, really suits you. Questo vestito ti sta molto bene. But be careful because uh, then the answer may be, oh, why? Because I'm not beautiful in other dresses, huh? Which you don't want to go through. Like, you have the whole relationship to go through that, right? So just, yeah. Maybe ask where did she buy that particular accessory. Like, dove hai comprato questa borsa? Where did you buy this bag? We all know you don't care. But sometimes, you know, you just have to say things that you don't really think. But the ones that are the most used ones are, for example, Posso avere il tuo numero? Can I have your number? Of course telephone number but you don't have to say that it's not like you're asking for her shoe size or maybe you are which is really nice by the way so you know what to buy here later on but yeah if you want to specify posso avere il tuo numero di telefono so can i have your cell phone number or nowadays probably posso aggiungerti su facebook can i add you on facebook we use whatsapp a lot in italy so you can ask for her whatsapp directly Posso avere il tuo WhatsApp? Can I have your WhatsApp? Which is the same as telephone number in the end. But can I write to you on WhatsApp? Posso scriverti su WhatsApp? Posso scriverti su WhatsApp? Then the most important one. Posso invitarti a cena con me? Can I invite you to have dinner with me? You don't really have to add that with me. Ti andrebbe di andare a cena? Would you like to go eat? I mean, I would say yes to anyone just because I like eating, but if you want to make sure that she gets 
it's a date, then ti andrebbe di uscire con me. Would you like to go out with me? Ti va di andare al cinema? This ti va is really nice in my opinion because it's not a direct question like why do you want to and it's not like would you like to, it's just more like do you feel like going to the cinema? Which is a nice safety zone to me because it's not too harsh on you if the girl says no because she's like ah, I don't really watch movies like you know read between the lines this is something very important if someone tells you no it's no now for the last part I want to briefly touch on those phrases that everyone thinks they're so nice and cute and extra and cheesy but that you don't really want to say maybe this is just my opinion but for example starting with I usually don't say this but di solito non lo dico ma you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen di solito non lo dico ma sei la donna più bella che abbia mai visto which is a really long phrase by the way <laughs> so maybe you would forget some parts while you say that sei la donna più bella che abbia mai visto mi sono innamorato just like I fell in love it's love at first sight è un colpo di fulmine colpo means hit and fulmine is the thunder so it basically means that a thunder hit you and you're just like oh what was that colpo di fulmine love at first sight Amore a prima vista, literally, but I prefer the colpo di fulmine. È stato un colpo di fulmine. Then let me just give you the cheesiest example. Ti sei fatta male quando sei caduta dal cielo perché sembri un angelo. Like, did it hurt when you fell from the sky because you look like an angel? This would be my reaction. But you know, you can try. Sembri un angelo. But if you're hitting on someone Italian, let's not forget that we're Italians and you may want to hit on our soft spots, being like, let's go get coffee together. Andiamo a prendere un caffè insieme. Andiamo a mangiare una pizza insieme. Let's go eat pizza together. Personally, that's what would touch me. Also because most times we probably just really like coffee and pizza that much that we would go anyway. So yeah, that's the safest you can go. Prendiamo un caffè insieme. First of all, let's say that as in English you can use them with the present tense. And starting with the highest level of frequency, we have sempre, which is always. Sempre, sempre. For example, io faccio sempre colazione alle otto. I always have my breakfast at eight. Position-wise, you put them after the verb. Sometimes maybe you will hear io faccio colazione alle otto sempre, but that's just a way to put emphasis on the last part of the phrase, so sempre. But usually it goes after the verb. Sometimes this adverb has the meaning of usually, Let's say, for example, faccio sempre colazione alle otto, ma nel weekend alle nove. Literally means I always have my breakfast at eight, but during the weekend at nine. So it's not always, of course, it's just like five days out of seven. And in that case, you would probably translate that as I usually have breakfast at eight, but during the weekend at nine. But yeah, it's still sempre. So if you do something always, but not really, kind of always, you can also say quasi sempre, almost always. Spesso, spesso. If you want to say often, we use spesso. Faccio spesso colazione al bar. I often have my breakfast at the bar. Another way to say often is frequentemente, frequentemente, but it's a bit more formal, I would say. If I talk to my friends, I would just use spesso. And be careful, because sometimes you hear the same word, spesso, but it also means thick. For example, this book is really thick. Questo libro è molto spesso. It's 
exactly the same word. It just has two meanings, okay? And the funny way of saying, I mean, it's not funny, it's just something that I like, is spesso e volentieri, which literally means often and gladly, often and happily. And yeah, it does mean that you do that happily, but I would translate it more as more often than not, so something that happens more than often, but not always. For example, vado spesso e volentieri al bar rosso. I go more than often to Bar Rosso, or I go to Bar Rosso often and gladly, if you prefer to think like that. Guardo spesso e volentieri i video di Desiree. I often watch Desiree's videos, and I enjoy that. Moving on to sometimes, we have different ways to say that, but one of the most common is ogni tanto. Ogni tanto. Ogni tanto. Literally means every now and then. Ogni tanto faccio colazione al bar, so sometimes I have breakfast at the bar. And ogni is really a useful word because you can combine it with everything as every in English. Ogni giorno, every day. Vado al mare ogni estate. I go to the sea every summer. While if something happens less than every now and then, I would say raramente, rarely. Raramente, raramente. Perfect example for spesso e volentieri combined with rarely. Faccio raramente colazione a casa. Vado spesso e volentieri al bar. I rarely have breakfast at home. I often go to the bar. Meaning that going to the bar happens more often than being at home for breakfast. While if you never do something, then you have to use mai. 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 But be careful, because mai has to be used in a negative sentence. Non faccio mai colazione. I never have breakfast. So literally it's I don't ever have breakfast at the bar. Io non faccio mai colazione al bar. Io non vado mai in vacanza al mare. I never spend my holidays at the sea. Non vado mai al mare. Non guardo mai video. I never watch videos. And even when you use almost never, so quasi mai, non vado quasi mai al bar. Still negative sentence, okay? Non faccio quasi mai colazione al bar, solo ogni tanto, only sometimes, quando sono stanca, when I'm tired, which is always, sempre. <laughs> okay, so to sum up, going to the most frequent, to the least one, we have sempre, always, Spesso, often, ogni tanto, sometimes, or raramente, rarely, and mai, never, or quasi mai, almost never, and quasi sempre, almost always, if you want to add a slight possibility that it doesn't always happen. One last thing, I have a question for you, and I also want to tell you how to ask how often. So my question is, quanto spesso studi italiano? How often do you study Italian? Or ogni quanto studi italiano? Same meaning. Quanto spesso? Ogni quanto? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Un insegnante sta parlando con degli studenti. Che cosa porteranno con loro gli studenti? Domani visiteremo un museo. Portate con voi una penna, un taccuino e qualcosa da bere. Pranzeremo nel ristorante del museo, quindi non c'è bisogno di portare panini. Dobbiamo portare l'ombrello? Potrebbe piovere, portatelo. Va bene. Che cosa porteranno con loro gli studenti? Un insegnante sta parlando con degli studenti. Che cosa porteranno con loro gli studenti? Domani visiteremo un museo. Portate con voi una penna, un taccuino e qualcosa da bere. Pranzeremo nel ristorante del museo, quindi non c'è bisogno di portare panini. Dobbiamo portare l'ombrello? Potrebbe piovere, portatelo. Va bene. Un uomo e una donna stanno parlando. 
quando andranno a farsi fare un massaggio? Un mio amico ha appena aperto un nuovo centro massaggi. Un centro massaggi? Voglio andarci. Hai tempo sabato? Sabato sono impegnato. Che ne dici di domenica? La domenica il centro è chiuso. Che ne dici allora di andarci venerdì? Ok. Quando andranno a farsi fare un massaggio? Un uomo e una donna stanno parlando. Quando andranno a farsi fare un massaggio? Un mio amico ha appena aperto un nuovo centro massaggi. Un centro massaggi? Voglio andarci. Hai tempo sabato? Sabato sono impegnato. Che ne dici di domenica? La domenica il centro è chiuso. Che ne dici allora di andarci venerdì? Ok. Top 25 Intermediate Italian Phrases These are intermediate phrases that you can use in everyday life. You can use them when you travel, at work or for your studies. They are for asking and answering questions. All right, let's get started. Vorrei andare a... I'd like to go to... Vorrei andare a... I'd like to go to... Vorrei andare a... Vorrei andare a... C'è un bancomat qui vicino? Is there an ATM nearby? C'è un bancomat qui vicino? Is there an ATM nearby? C'è un bancomat qui vicino? C'è un bancomat qui vicino? Per favore, dimmi di più su... Please, tell me more about... Per favore, dimmi di più su... Please, tell me more about... Per favore, dimmi di più su... Per favore, dimmi di più su... Hai buon gusto? You have good taste. Hai buon gusto? You have good taste. Hai buon gusto? Hai buon gusto? Hai tempo sabato prossimo? Do you have time next Saturday? Hai tempo sabato prossimo? Do you have time next Saturday? Hai tempo sabato prossimo? Hai tempo sabato prossimo? Ho fatto tardi perché l'autobus non è passato. I'm late because the bus did not show up. Ho fatto tardi perché l'autobus non è passato. I'm late because the bus did not show up. Ho fatto tardi perché l'autobus non è passato. Ho fatto tardi perché l'autobus non è passato. Fa silenzio, per favore. Please keep quiet. Fa silenzio, per favore. Please keep quiet. Fa silenzio, per favore. Fa silenzio, per favore. Hai domande? Do you have a question? Hai domande? Do you have a question? Hai domande? Hai domande? Non mi sento bene. I don't feel well. Non mi sento bene. I don't feel well. Non mi sento bene. Non mi sento bene. Che cosa mi consiglia? 
What do you recommend? Che cosa mi consiglia? What do you recommend? Che cosa mi consiglia? Che cosa mi consiglia? In questo piatto c'è del... Does this dish contain any... In questo piatto c'è del... Does this dish contain any... In questo piatto c'è del... In questo piatto c'è del... Non posso mangiare, bere. I can eat, drink. Non posso mangiare, bere. I can eat, drink. Non posso mangiare, bere. Non posso mangiare, bere. Mi piace. I like to. Mi piace. I like to. Mi piace. Mi piace. Com'è il tempo? How's the weather? Com'è il tempo? How's the weather? Com'è il tempo? Com'è il tempo? Ho perso il mio oggetto. I lost my item. Ho perso il mio oggetto. I lost my item. Ho perso il mio oggetto. Ho perso il mio oggetto. Posso sedermi qui? Can I sit here? Posso sedermi qui? Can I sit here? Posso sedermi qui? Posso sedermi qui? Avete un, uno, una? Do you have a... Avete un, uno, una? Do you have a... Avete un, uno, una. Avete un, uno, una. Sto cercando. I'm looking for. Sto cercando. I'm looking for. Sto cercando. Sto cercando. Il mio indirizzo email è. My email address is. Il mio indirizzo email è. My email address is. Il mio indirizzo email è. Il mio indirizzo email è. Che cosa fai? What do you do? Che cosa fai? What do you do? Che cosa fai? Che cosa fai? Sono andato al cinema. I went to the cinema. Sono andato al cinema. I went to the cinema. Sono andato al cinema. Sono andato al cinema. Entra. Come in. Entra. Come in. Entra. Entra. 
La mia canzone preferita è... My favorite song is... La mia canzone preferita è... My favorite song is... La mia canzone preferita è... La mia canzone preferita è... Che tipo di musica ti piace? What kind of music do you like? Che tipo di musica ti piace? What kind of music do you like? Che tipo di musica ti piace? Che tipo di musica ti piace? Buon compleanno! Happy birthday! Buon compleanno! Happy birthday! Buon compleanno! Buon compleanno! How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Do you think it's possible to speak more of your target language by preparing lines ahead of time? Today you're going to learn 1. Why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time and 2. How you can prepare for conversations in your target language. If you've always wanted to speak more of your target language but didn't know how, this tactic will give you more to talk about. How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Okay, let's get into part one. Why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time. If you're a beginner, you can probably relate to this. When it comes to speaking, you tend to run out of things to say. And that's because you don't know enough of the language to express yourself. And that's where preparation comes in. You may think that the conversations we have in our daily lives are spontaneous, that you can't prepare for them. You're right to an extent. But imagine meeting someone for the first time. Both of you will go through some common questions and phrases like, what's your name? My name is, where are you from? And how long have you been studying the language? As a language learner, you'll have these kinds of conversations with almost every native you meet, guaranteed. They'll always ask you about how long and how you've been learning. And even with your friends, some conversations start the same way. For example, you say things like, hey, how are you? How are things? How was your weekend? My weekend was good, and you? Let's say you went to a restaurant this weekend, and now you want to talk about it. Well, that allows you to prepare and learn some phrases, like, I went to a restaurant. The restaurant had delicious food. The point is, some questions and phrases come up often in conversations, so it makes total sense to master them ahead of time. And you can always plan ahead and prepare for things you want to talk about. When it comes time to speak, you know what to say, how to respond, and you don't run out of talking points as quickly. So, how do you prepare? Let's jump into part two. The first thing you can do to prepare is check out our 25 questions you need to know lesson series. This series is specifically designed to help you with the first time conversations you'll have with native speakers. You'll learn the 25 most common questions and answers used in conversations. Just listen to the lessons, repeat out loud, then put what you learn to use. These will serve as talking points so you can keep your conversations going. Number two. Print out the curriculum for this lesson series so you can review all of the lessons at once. The curriculum gives you the lines and vocabulary used in all lessons up front, so you can use this to review key questions and responses. This will allow you to control conversations and ask questions instead of just having the native speaker ask you all the questions. In other words, you'll sound like a fluid, confident, and experienced speaker. Number three, check out our printable conversation cheat sheets. This is another free resource that gives you lines and words for all kinds of topics. For example, talking about hobbies, your family, and much more. Number four, ask yourself, what do you want to talk about? Come up with some topics, and for each topic, write out potential questions and phrases that would come up in a conversation. For example, if you want to talk about restaurants, you can have lines like, my favorite restaurant is, my favorite food is, what's your favorite restaurant? and then run these lines through a translation app. It won't be perfect, but it'll give you lines to use that you can correct later. Number five, look for lessons that are related to your topics with our lesson library. 
On our site, we have hundreds of lessons that teach you conversations. So if you're looking for lessons related to restaurants and food, you'll get all kinds of conversations that you can use for yourself. And number six, if you're a Premium Plus user, get in touch with your teacher via My Teacher and try a conversation with them. They'll help you every step of the way, correct your writing, and give you the lines to use in a conversation. That way, you can prepare ahead of time, and when it comes time to speak, you'll know what to say. All right, everyone, here's a challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30-second to one-minute video or audio clip. Tell us, what's your language learning goal for 2020? If you do, you'll win a one-month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form. Attach the audio or video file and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. Most people don't like to hear this, but consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors in your language learning success. The course or method you choose makes a difference too, but at the end of the day, you ride or die by the work you put in. The quantity of time spent studying language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about three ways to actively engage your mind while studying a new language. Number one, think of your brain as a muscle. You're probably familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen them plastered on a wall. There's an idea in the world of sports and workouts that the discomfort you feel when running, pumping iron, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. During a healthy workout, the muscles of the body are affected at a microscopic level. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time, your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle. Just as we need to push our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental limits when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two, practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to someone speaking your target language and you do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or even our language program, which has very useful transcripts for each lesson. During a practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if little to no words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. After you've hit the ceiling of words you can decipher, go ahead and look at the language subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again, reading along with the text. Odds are that you will see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, feel free to look up the remaining unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful method to help you retain what you study. Number three, practicing with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is the epitome of pushing your language skills. Using what you know to communicate in real time is where the rubber really meets the road. Try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Regularity is what makes the difference when you're learning a foreign language. 
If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a significant chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try hitting up a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites out there that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve their own language skills as well. Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. The further away you get from your native language, the closer you'll be to attaining fluency. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming up the proverbial stream. It's by keeping your head up long enough through these ups and downs that you will experience the priceless satisfaction that comes from learning a foreign language. Just keep moving forward. Let's be honest, it's difficult to learn a new language. If you're new to a language, it's going to take consistent and concentrated effort to start using the language fluently. However, this fact shouldn't discourage you. While learning a new language is hard, it's far from impossible. In this video, we'll outline five tips you can use to jumpstart your language learning. Follow these pointers to learn your target language in a way that is efficient and effective. Number one, limit your native language use when practicing. The idea here is that when you practice with native speakers, you do your best to refrain from using your native language. This is generally harder the less you know, but if you can manage to stick to this rule, you'll reap some huge rewards. If you commit to a no native language practice session, it's not going to be easy. Most likely there will be some frustrating, if not painstakingly difficult moments where you either have trouble understanding the person you're talking to or you can't say what you wanna say. It's precisely in these moments that your language learning muscles are built up to capacity. The process really isn't all that different from working out in the gym. Just replace the physical burn of lifting weights for the mental burn of thinking in a new language. In the end, if there's no pain, there's no gain. Obviously, this no native language rule doesn't have to be written in stone. There are times when it's more beneficial to break out of the target language box and have something explained to you in your native language. However, this should definitely be the exception rather than the standard. Number two, have set times to practice speaking throughout the week. Now that we've discussed a good way to practice speaking, let's delve a bit into when to speak. One of the best commitments you can keep while learning a new language is to set aside specific times to practice speaking the language on a weekly basis. Ideally, these speaking sessions are on set days at specific times and form part of your weekly routine. If you don't make it a point to set aside specific practice times, you run the risk of your language practice falling through the cracks of your busy schedule. I recommend writing down your practice times and hanging it somewhere you can always see it. You could also input the times into your phone and set an alarm. The point is to remind yourself of your commitment every day so that it doesn't fall by the wayside. Number three, get picky about vocabulary. Whether you practice with a podcast, a friend at a coffee shop, or a teacher, you're going to run into a flood of new and unfamiliar vocabulary. Despite your best efforts, it's unlikely that you'll be able to pin down every new word or phrase you hear and study it later. Thus, you should pick and choose which new words you focus on. The defining quality of each new word you learn should be its practicality. The more useful a word or phrase is to you in a conversation, the more important it is that you learn it. Don't feel like you have to cram the entirety of your target language into one week of study. Take it one step at a time. A few practical words here, some more there. Before you know it, you'll see your vocabulary improve. Number four, write and practice short monologues. This tip can be a lot of fun. Begin by selecting a topic you enjoy discussing. Then, simply write out a short monologue or speech on the subject in your target language. The first thing you'll notice while doing this will likely be the holes in your grammar and vocabulary. But when you try to write out your thoughts in a foreign language, you might inevitably hit roadblocks. You might not be able to think of a word or know how to formulate a specific idea or opinion yet. This can be great because these holes are the exact areas where you should focus your studies. You can bring up these problem areas in your next lesson or browse through your favorite language course or textbook in order to find the answer. The constant process of finding these language holes and filling them is what keeps you moving along the path to fluency.
Once you finish your short text, it's a great idea to practice reciting it or even memorizing it. The memorization will help you internalize the new grammar and vocabulary you've learned. Reciting it will get your tongue and mouth used to the sounds. Number five, keep an up-to-date list on what you want to learn. Throughout your studies, you should always have a sort of language shopping list. As you practice and study, you will most likely come across things you'd like to be able to say, but don't know how to yet, especially if you follow our previous tip. Write this wish list down. It's one thing to learn the vocabulary you pick up via a course or podcast, both of which are great. It's a bit different when your vocabulary gets personal. Learn the words that matter to you, either because they're practical or because you simply find them interesting. The more relevant the vocabulary, the more likely you are to retain it. Some people might tell you it's impossible to learn a new language for whatever reason, but it's important to remember that the way you study and engage with a language greatly affects how quickly or effectively you learn it. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.